Rich, we'll kind of stay with you for the next one. Kind of talk about the logistics of a gap year and what that could mean for, for juniors. Or yeah, I, it's a question we're getting a lot right now. You know, of what, well, maybe we should take a gap year. Um, you know, for one thing, for what Brooksy said, maybe um, players want to just delay going to college for a year with some of this uncertainty. Maybe players want to delay a year to have a better opportunity to play at a school day they perceive to be, you know, a better fit, a better fit for them. I think there's a few misconceptions with the gap year um, that I think, you know, families need to really consider. Um, you know, number one, there's usually not as much time. Uh, you know, when you make this decision, you know, families need to understand starting June 15 of this summer, for example, coaches will begin recruiting for the class of 2022, right? Or, or certainly, uh, they, maybe they already are identifying players, but they're going to be able to talk to families. Um, and then starting in August, they can start, you know, theoretically visiting the school. So that clock is already winding on, on that class. So if you're in the class of 2021, for example, um, if you wait to make this decision until say January or February or April of next year, you know, a lot of those spots will have already be, uh, been taken by the class of 2022. So if this is something you're considering for uh, the class of 2021, you know, the sooner you can make that decision, the better. Um, a lot of times we get the question, well, what do coaches think of gap years? You know, what do college coaches think of gap years? I think um, when I was a coach, the coaches I talked to, the vast majority, um, Brooksy, feel free to chime in if, if you, um, you know, agree or disagree, but, you know, coaches typically really like players that are, are coming in as a gap year, as long as the player has a plan in place for what they're going to do for the year, they're not competing, you know, in school. Number one, you know, typically you're going to be a, a year, well, you're definitely a year older, but you know, you're gonna be a year more mature. Typically you're gonna be a year more physically mature, uh, strength wise, um, and, and golf wise, right. You're gonna have another year of golf under your belt and, you know, having that extra year of 19 to 23, as opposed to 18 to 22, um, is a really big difference. You know, your maturity at that age is, is really, uh, exponential in those, um, few months. So I think coaches typically, um, like that coaches maybe don't like so much the idea of, well, I'm just gonna take a gap year because I didn't get to go to this school and, you know, that sucks. And I want to do this other thing. You know, if you can go to a coach and say, coach, this is why I'm taking a gap year. Um, for these two or three reasons, this is why this is what I'm going to do during the year. Um, and we'll get to that in a minute of, of what you can do. Um, this is how I'm going to train. This is maybe how I'm going to take some, some courses at a community college. This is how I'm going to take courses at a prep school, um, you know, and give a coach like this is going to be a year of development for me. Um, I think coaches, you know, really like that. Brooksy, do you have any comments on that? I think that's. Uh... Yeah, I think I think that everything you said, coaches. Well, one thing, Rich, is it shows how committed the player is to getting better. You know, if they're willing to defer college a whole year because of golf, it, it demonstrates to the coach they really want to improve. And as long as you have a plan and you compete. Um, and I think that plan should include some academic component, taking a few courses somewhere, earning some credits. Um, I think it can be a great, a great op people. And, and I think coaches view it positively for the most part. Yes, I agree. And, you know, to, to that academic point, you know, if, uh, from an, NC, from the NCAA perspective, if you take less than 12 credits per semester, you don't start your clock. Okay. So the clock is you are, you're allowed to play. You have five years to play four uh, athletic seasons. So theoretically uh, a player could go to a local community college, a local college, whatever, and take um, in most cases, freshman years, a lot of kind of general courses, English, science, math, et cetera. Um, and theoretically you could go into college with say anywhere from 12 to 18 credits, which is a, a really big deal especially if you're playing a high level of golf. I know as a player myself, I had to take uh, 18 credits, I think three times uh, as a player. And it was brutal, you know, for me, I wasn't, you know, maybe the best student, but uh, it was tough, you know, and you're trying to balance division one golf, uh, you know, working out school, social life, whatever. So if you can go in um, with that in the bank, 
uh, number one, you're going to make yourself, you know, a little bit more attractive to a coach because they're going to say, well, you know, Johnny or, or Sally um, maybe only has to take 12 or 15 credits for their entire career. So they could, you know, devote a little bit more time to golf, which is good for coach from a coaching perspective. Um, and, and for the player, you can uh, have a little bit better balance and a little bit more time to devote both to school and, and to golf. Um, so I think that's good. Um, some players, you know, during the gap year choose to maybe go to a, a postgraduate um, prep school that could help them maybe get into a little bit better uh, university ultimately uh, during that year. So that could be another another way to do it. Um, some players choose to maybe go to uh, a golf academy um, to work on their game 12 months a year, 365 days a year. That works for some people. For other people, they're better off maybe staying at home and working with their current swing coach and, you know, taking these credits. So I think there's a lot that goes into it. Um, if you have a plan and, and can execute it, I think it's super valuable. Um, but also know that it may not dramatically change the list of schools you're looking at um, between two classes, right? And I think that's an important note. You may not jump like three levels doing this. It may be that you wind up at a school you were already talking to for your current class. So that's okay. You know, you may, you may just be more better, you know, better prepared to compete for those four years um, at, at the school you wind up going to. So um, I think that's another conception like, oh, I'm going to all of a sudden go to this other, you know, level of schools. Sometimes that happens, but most of the time it's uh, pretty consistent with the schools you're, you're already looking at. And I feel like, you know, Richie probably agree with this. So the gap year is great for a player who has shown constant improvement over the past 12 or 18 or 24 months. And, mm -hmm. and they're really, they're on an upward trajectory. And that extra year, you know, extending the runway for one more season, um, you know, logically makes sense. But if the player has plateaued and for the past 12 or 18 months has played about the same as they did two years previously, an extra year of golf um, theoretically isn't going to make a big difference in the recruiting process. Now, that's for golf. You know, general maturity and academics, you know, post um, folks that choose to do a postgrad year, they apply to university one year later. And so when they apply their entire senior year, you know, on their high school transcripts is included, you know, so academically, there might be reasons to do it too, where they defer a year and, and have more time to demonstrate in high school that they're also on an upward trajectory and they can take the standardized test a few more times. So it's case by case, but it's, I think in the final analysis, it's a, it's a good option for some people to at least consider.